All right, all right. Check one, check two. This is it. Welcome to the Cannabis Coffee Hour with your host, me, Rob Cantrell, coming to you live and direct uh, right here, right now, uh, right in your earphones, right from the internet, uh, coming from Brooklyn, New York. I have a little bit of cannabis, which I've enjoyed a little bit today. And I've also have a uh, nice iced coffee, an afternoon iced coffee, an afternoon delight. Uh, this is episode 159. Uh, we're getting up there. Uh, think about that. That's, uh, that's a lot of weeks. That's over two years. Um, but the, I heard the magic number is 250. <laughs> but the numbers are going up, so I want to say thank you, and I appreciate you for listening to the Cannabis Coffee Hour. I got a great episode for you today. I'm enjoying um, some great cannabis. This is garlic cookies. Uh, cookies comes from kind of this diesel family, but um, it's more of an indica. Um, this is just a great batch, and I have a little bit of CBD that I mixed with it, just so uh, so I don't indica out and fall out. But in terms of being calm and cool, uh, it definitely it definitely has taken the edge off the times. <laughs> I don't know if it's the times. How's everybody doing out there? Hanging in there. It feels like it, we're in February right now. Um, it feels like Omicron or I don't know. I, I don't want to talk about it too much, but, uh, I, you know, hopefully think I'm feeling April. I'm feeling a really good 420 this year. I just think uh, people are dealing with it. The reality is it is what it is. And, you know, for me, uh, I am on kind of uh, masked up when i'm outside you know i kind of let it fly if it's a bunch of people i'll mask up still kind of quarantine not quarantining but hiding out a bit um was lining up people to zoom on the podcast but it seems like every the podcast industry is blowing up so much i hate bothering too many people so i bothered a few super interesting people uh to be on the podcast um but my timing hasn't been as professional as I would need to, <laughs> but we'll get some funny uh, out there cats. And I definitely want to shout out to all the great uh, coffee shops in the world, but especially Brooklyn. Uh, I just really cost cafe on fifth Avenue. Check them out. I think it's K O S S. Um, they are amazing. Uh, that's where I got this afternoon iced coffee. Um, and they and I also got a oatmeal cinnamon uh, pumpkin spice oatmeal cookie. It was amazing. Something about oatmeal cookies just make it just it feels healthy. <laughs> There's something because like a chocolate chip cookie is just like, oh, man, that's chocolate chip. But an oatmeal cookie, I don't know. There's something about oatmeal uh, that is life preserving, uh, life uh, affirming. And it just tastes good. If you haven't had it in a while, if you're always having it, you're like, man, fuck oatmeal. But I guess that's a little bit like everything, except for pizza and weed. <laughs> I could say something much cruder, but I've evolved uh, a little bit. For sure. I'm trying some of this cannabis. Uh, today I did not, oh man, wow, yeah, the, uh, garlic cookies, if you get, ever get a handle on garlic cookies, uh, I recommend it, it's a nice indica, but also happy, and, um, not too head trippy, not too racy, but I did mix it with, the, like, the CBD of the sour diesel, so I got a little of my, favorite cbd in there like i do think that's what's so awesome about this podcast is coffee and cannabis they both can be consumed and they all are consumed the thing about coffee and cannabis like it's almost 
once you hit 30s and 40s, it's almost like a given. Like how much coffee? Some people don't like coffee. Some, I mean, it's pretty much kept me running uh, for the last 20 years. I mean, I'm coming on 49 years old. Been doing stand up since I was 27. I almost, I'm a little bit over 20 years, man. Um, and I've been pounding coffee and smoking herb the whole time. But even before that, I enjoyed it. I don't know. I think it was right after college. College, I didn't drink coffee. Smoked some herb. Started off drinking hardcore. And then herb kind of saved me from blowing out my gut too bad. And after college, got back into drinking a little bit more because I hated my job. And then I kind of just like, as soon as I found stand-up, um, doing comedy, stand-up comedy, you know, drinking was like, whatever, man. I enjoyed just pursuing the shows, going to the shows, writing the material, figuring it out, hanging out. And during all that, smoking one hitters and, you know, roasting bowls. That's just how I rolled. Um, that's st still how I roll. <laughs> so welcome to the Cannabis Coffee Hour. I'm a uh, stand-up comedian, uh, actor, and uh, sometimes I'm a, a rapper. Sometimes uh, I bust a few rhymes. I won't on this podcast. Like I've said, I mean, I can freestyle. I'm doing something on 420 that's going to have some freestyle rap. But I definitely am more of I enjoy making songs. I got a new album out there that's all kind of like my comedy music and it leans towards hip-hop i guess uh it's definitely some rhymes but I, it's definitely got its own vibe like i just try to make it its own thing but it's definitely heavily influ influenced by hip-hop and rap but since i'm older my influence on hip-hop and rap everybody talks about the 90s and i listen to a lot of 90s hip hop, but I definitely am like, if you're born in 1972, like my hip hop starts from break dancing. And that was it, man. Uh, my first concert was uh, the Fresh Fest. You can hear it. I tell a story about it on my album it, that is called Pure Uncut Joy on 800 Pound Gorilla. You can't listen to it on Spotify because they're being, they're kind of being tricky, man. I don't know about Spotify. Uh, all this stuff going down. I don't know. Uh, we still are. The podcast is on Spotify, but my iTunes numbers are a little bit bigger. Um, but yeah, they're kind of fucking around with my, my podcast. I don't know, man. Uh, I'm still up in the air, um, whether to keep my Spotify subscription or not, or even keep my material there. I think with, with, um, curating like, all of your art and all your material, like it's just evolving and everybody's kind of figuring out where it goes. For me, after 20 years, I'm kind of figuring out where I want to go and where my vibe is best suited. But I do know, uh, please like and subscribe to the podcast on uh, iTunes and Spotify. <laughs> yeah, but if you're on iTunes, like, uh, and subscribe write something let's pump it up um i enjoy it if you want to watch this video you can watch me smoking pot smoking pot with my friends um but it's all on the patreon you have to get on the patreon and that's where the dope ass uh merch that's going to be rolling out um but i'm excited about cannabis and coming out of the pandemic and coffee um because i'd never get sick of it <laughs> i enjoy it i love it i love doing this podcast i get better each time uh, i throw on some funky beats maybe i won't do that as much i thought that might have been a little too much filler but uh i got some i got some uh stuff coming up i'm working on some beat machines so i I'm, i got a a pre-order on a really dope groove box that I hope to assimilate into the podcast and just have be able to uh, bring up beats, bring out beats. I'm a big fan of what's that? Like the study lo-fi hip hop. Like I, 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 I definitely dig um, 
vibes. You know, I think that's what it is now. Like everybody's looking for more of a chiller vibe. I, I know with me, with the pandemic, like if you listen to this podcast, I'm trying not to talk that much um, Buddhism or spirituality because I think you need to practice it and not talk it. And, um, but I, I will say with the pandemic, just learning which, where my ego is and that kind of monkey mind talking voice and how that isn't really you. I don't know with meditation, it's just helped me, you know, really look at myself in 360 and who I am and who I really want to be. And as bad as the pandemic wa is, was, and it's get, definitely given me uh, uh, 10, <laughs> 10 years with my family uh, together. And then like, it's definitely taught me how to meditate. Like I was, I did 40 minutes. I was doing 40 minutes. And I remember maybe not five years ago, I couldn't even picture five minutes. I couldn't even think about it. Like I would sit there and try it. And my mind would just be too much racing. And it does it like today. I didn't meditate today. My racing mind caught me and uh, I slid. I didn't because a lot of it's just the discipline of practicing. But at the same time, you don't want to be so disciplined to practicing where it just becomes mechanical. That's how I'm trying to treat everything in my life. Kind of just go with the flow a little bit more and give up. Um in the sense of just letting the universe play out a little bit, you know, just putting the, putting the attention, what I want, what I think, what I need, what I feel, what I feel, uh, and then go for that. And I feel like doing this podcast. I feel like drinking more coffee, I feel like checking out all these co awesome coffee shops in Brooklyn, like, uh, Condotori is down the street. That's where I got, they got the best iced red eye. I went, went through an iced red eye phase. I've been into a, a small. I need to watch how much money I'm spending on coffee, but I did get gifted a ton of really good coffee. And then I've been like doing like small afternoon cups here and there. So it's not like a coffee a day. Let's say I pay for coffee maybe once or twice during the week. And then the rest is like my, you know, my French press. It's my coffee at home is still I'm getting to the point where it's just so much better than even most coffee shops. But that's why I do like kind of the iced red eye and because I don't have an espresso clackety clack 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 boom, pow, 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 machine. But one day, one day I will. That's that and two turntables, a espresso <laughs> clackety clack machine and uh, the ones and twos. So um, I'm enjoying some great afternoon iced coffee. Dude, shout out to Boba Fett. So I just finished the final episode last night. The series is epic and uh, it is just so brilliant. I did fall asleep a couple times, but I think it's just like I'm running so hard during the day. You know, I hit a couple one hitters, but I then I catch up in the morning. So I'll watch it and I get psyched and then I'll fall asleep a little bit because I think I'm so psyched and I'm so relaxed. I'm so relaxed because I watch it like in bed by myself um, with the lights off and I'm just like trying to get so, I get so into it. But this latest one, man, uh, Grogu, my man, because a little Yoda guy, if you, I don't want to, I don't want, I don't want to put any spo spoilers out there, but some of the scenes, the action scenes, and I hate violence and, I'm not into guns. I'm kind of playing away from all that, you know, aggro gun shit. But I do like Star Wars for some reason. And I love lasers. I think, uh, I don't know, the fantasy of it all. It is a way of getting away from yourself is entertainment, you know. It's all distractions. So you have to pick your distractions. I think that's the name of the game and why a lot of people are stir crazy too is the media uh in terms of the media that you consume and how much you consume that's what bums me out about like tiktok and instagram like i got instagram and i do love it i'll scroll i'll do the 
the coffin pose where you lay down and you just scroll <laughs> with your glasses off and you're just killing your eyes and you're killing your brain with uh with jealousy of other comedians uh but you try not to i mean i've i've gotten that's what i think it's like there's so much i don't know it's just almost too much with social media like it makes your brain go but that's how the kids are thinking these days um but i do think there's a limit you know in how to make your brain last longer this is kind of the angle i'm taking with doing meditation and trying to go inward um because the outside you cannot control you can only control the inside in terms of how you feel with it because in the chaos has always been going down i remember the 80s like there when i was like in the fifth or sixth grade thinking about nuclear war like it was like on the news all the time there was mo movies about it um and you're like oh man was there is there going to be a nuclear war um and war is like the wackest thing the older the more we get evolved i just think aggro aggression you know the more evolved we get the smarter we get it just gets like you could just tell like it doesn't it doesn't help it it just makes the overall situation worse when people are bombing and killing and armies but you know russia and ukraine i don't know what's going on but i don't want to make this podcast a pot uh a political podcast i want this to be a good thing that if you, if you want to sip on some coffee here's some trippy stuff about boba fett and music and herb out and coffee uh, but life is life and and that's what this uh podcast is also about so just to bring it on home we're not conforming baby <laughs> speaking of that's kind of what i was watching there's a great a video of one of the bands i don't know why i key into it but one of the bands that i think it was like the first time i felt like good punk rock and i wasn't like a punk rock dude was listening to that operation ivy cd and it was mostly about the percussion and and the beats and the lyrics and the tone it was just perfect uh but i was w watching like the <laughs> like they have the dudes coming back together the band coming back together and they were doing the song sound system which is a ska punk song check it out by operation ivy but the, yeah it's they're like a little bit older than i am you know they're like in their 50s and their dads and shit and just to pull off the punk rock moves um pulling off being a rock star the older you get some people could do it gracefully these dudes did punk rock you could kind of like punk rock isn't about looking cool it, well it's kind of you know it matters what kind of punk rock you're talking about good punk rock is like anti-cool um and that's what makes it cool but the labeling of things is what makes it whack i mean that's where i'm at now is even with so much drama in the LBC, um, I do know when I meditate and go back to like the moment and tiny wins, man, I'm all about tiny wins, like building on right now. The only thing was we have this moment now. So you kind of got to let go of before and after and just work on today. Um, that's a great lyric of a fish song. One of their late, I've, I've talked about it on the podcast, but uh yeah everything's right just hold tight um so uh everything's all right or something um it's just about living in the moment i got a little bake there i could i was quoting a fish song that i couldn't remember <laughs> welcome to the cannabis coffee hour with your host uh but the yeah the boba fett joint was brilliant um yeah i want to watch all six of them in a row but i was they were like it's the season finale and it was just to six and i was like man 
you stop and it's I was expecting like a full season to be like 12 um six but the, they're so well done and the final one's at least almost an hour and uh yeah it's brilliant it's just brilliant and i can't and it kind of leads into the mandalorian i could watch these things all day this is my new thing is uh really good sci-fi <laughs> but they kind of i don't know when when boba fett when the mandalorian when boba fett is riding this big fucking monster thing that he oh man his pet and he's smashing robots at the end it's the last 20 minutes is literally like a professional wrestling match between uh like ogre like king kong like no like just a crazy like beast versus this like insane nuclear robot that just non could not be stopped with analog weapons man this thing was this thing was on wi-fi and everything else but star wars is kind of analog you know that's why i liked like i could tell like some of the stunts like they still use puppetry it's not all like cgi they still use like models and shit you know but they also use the best of the best is george lucas just wow one little thing and his other Star Wars and his and then his other thing was American Graffiti, which was the exact opposite of Star Wars. Do I have that right? I might. I don't want to make this. Uh, it, But I do like good directors. I do see myself directing films and movies like I've done. I produce. You can check out my YouTube. I produce a, a short television type show pilot type uh web series like i guess i've done a lot of those um where i've created the whole idea not the whole sometimes i work with partners but uh like there's this one i did with dan powell that is do, does a lot of stuff with amy schumer and michael che and i did that for bonnaroo and i'm proud of it check it out on my youtube page and that's called universally speaking with rob cantrell and it's only got four episodes, but I wrote them all and casted them all and shot them all. And it's kind of out there. And sometimes you're like, you do these type of things and you're like, is this thing going to end up looking whack? But I look at them and I'm like, ah, it's not whack. Sometimes they are. I'll tell you if it's lame, but that one's good. Well, I won't tell you if it's lame. I'll just try to hide it. <laughs> Curate. Yeah, the lame the lame ducks um but the sun is out today it's been like freezing like dude east coast january and february on the east coast is just like you just gotta take it that's what it's all about the little winds hot showers hot cups of coffee bowls of soup taco night uh sledding uh, good herb Herb is great for, you know, snowy conditions, for hiding out, for, uh, I had to make flyers for this show. Like I made this flyer and I actually am like putting the flyers out places. Like I know everything's like, we got a cool event bright for it too, but, but this is February 20th. I got a great show. I want everybody, if you can hear this podcast to come out, um, February 20th, this is like. This is going to be the Sunday night at 830 of President Day weekend. This is February 20th um, and the lineup. And I'm going to be hosting the night. It's called Rob Cantrell and Super Friends. And the lineup is Joe Parra, Dina Hesham and Matt Koff. Uh, Dina Hesham is a great comedian. Very funny. Uh, Matt Koff is very fun. like I, and I haven't performed a lot with these dudes, but uh, in Lady. Um, but they are my good friends and I respect them. And it's just a great, cool lineup. And I haven't been doing like any stand up. Even this week, a couple of clubs asked me and I was like, eh. I have been getting used to not performing, but I haven't taken that much time off. And that's what's been good about this podcast, even doing the solo ones. I love doing it because it helps me. This is like 
this is good uh, mic time, stage time. I mean, I don't have an audience, but, you know, sometimes with my stand up, I just kind of <laughs> go with how I feel anyway. I really want to get back to that more out there style, you know, get more out there on Pluto. Yeah, Pluto, that was the first planet that got canceled. <laughs> Yeah, they canceled its name. They were like, you're no longer called Pluto. You're number number. And then everybody's like, nah, man, that shit's Pluto. <laughs> We're not doing that. Uh, I'm not sure if that's somebody else's joke. I wrote that and I just have like my notebook out. So I looked down and I and I wanted to talk about Pluto. That was this is a this is another part of my guess. My my list is I want to talk about uh Big Jesus. I want to talk about Jesus in my new stand-up. Coffee and uh, dumps, going to bathroom, and granola. That's all. I don't have that many jokes, but those are the four concepts that I'm going for <laughs> on my new stand-up. I mean, I'm excited about doing stand-up. Uh, I haven't ever released a proper special. Like, I did my own half-hour um, and special, I made a DVD and sold it myself, but that was like in 2005, 2006. And ever since then, I haven't released like a full, I've did, I've done two full albums, audio albums since then. And I've done a couple late night appearances in like web shows and stuff like that. Billion live shows, so many live shows. And I toured with Tracy Morgan for a year and a half. Like, uh, but I haven't done a proper special, like come out and done a full hour. And that's what I'm doing. 420, I am taping like this uh, 420 special with a small, <clears throat> smaller set. But coming in the year, hopefully if uh, all this stuff burns out or gets a little bit safer to perform live, and I feel, I feel comfortable and you feel comfortable and we can come together. The venue I am playing on February 20th for Rob Cantrell and Super Friends is like super vaxxed, super like they check vax IDs, um, they wear masks. Um, they're very progressive in terms of being safe, but also doing shows, but doing safe shows. I think there is a way of doing safe shows, and I think we have been going at it and figuring it out um it's just been so complicated like pointing the finger and judging people right now there's so much of people doing that that for me it's like i don't even you know i'm just glad i woke up and i'm alive especially after that uh bob saget r.i.p like dude he just banged his head and went out it can go that simple you know, that's what's so precious about life is that, you know, it could be just such a simple thing and then it's done, you know, or the day just comes where and it's done. And that's a bummer and all that. But so the idea that that bummer feeling should bring you to the point that it's like the only moment is now and just to be kind, 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 nice to you and yourself and everybody else. What's the drama with your mama, man? I need to get a haircut. My hair has gotten so out there. But I got some great eucalyptus shampoo that I was, I mean, if you, if you want some good organic shampoo, just look for the good eucalyptus. Um, I just like saying that word. <laughs> it has a, such a great ring, eucalyptus. Um, and it has koala-like feelings. I've never been to Australia. And I've always wanted to go to Australia. I'm turning like 49. I'm getting to 50. I got to get these bucket list things out and off and done. But I do like the way of travel these days, like smartphones and hotels. I think hotels and smartphones are getting better in terms of making travel a lot easier. Like I'm not that intimidated, especially after being a comedian. And also just how my family travels and just like, and then when I went around the world in my younger twenties, um, 
and I didn't have a cell phone. I went all throughout Southeast Asia for four months in, two, in 1997, 98, 97. It was 98, 99. And I didn't have a cell phone, just had a backpack and a, a Yahoo address <laughs> and, a, and a passport and uh, a bunch of money. Not a ton of money. But uh, the thing was, in 97, the dollar was booming. So you would go to another country, you could double your money. It was so good. And then you could fall out and get a better hotel. It's all about getting a better hotel. But the problem with hotels is sometimes the best hotels rip you off and you have to pay for water. It's right in the middle. It's right the upper middle. That's always been my goal. I've never wanted, I don't want to say that because I do, I wouldn't mind as much money as I could get, but I don't want to be driven by money, but I, I just think that I would, my point is I like medium rare. I like medium roast. I like upper medium, you know, class, you know, that's the kind of money I want to make, but do it by doing what I love. Really. I think, you know, the money will come if you just keep on going towards what you love. And I do love doing coffee, drinking coffee, doing this podcast and smoking good herb. I got my classy one hitter. Uh, this is from Marley Naturals. They got a great, it's got a wooden stem. It's, uh, I definitely recommend it. Uh, and I cleaned it out. You know, it's a great pipe cleaner is called, they're called Zen Pipe Cleaner, Z-E-N. And they're kind of like those, you know, kind of like what you would, your grandpa pipe would clean but they work great with glass one hitters um which is a uh, chillum chillum is that how you pronounce it um but nature is all around us <laughs> uh, i haven't gone for my hike today i haven't gone all i've gone for is uh, i drank some coffee and then i ate some tacos left over from taco tuesday but it was great. I had rice and beans that were kind of flavored with chicken. Like I had a little bit of chicken left, but I had a bunch of rice and beans. So I mixed that up. But then I had some tortillas that were already toasted, but they were all packaged together, like in the refrigerator. So I just zested them up and then hit them up with some uh, amazing salt, fresh salsa. And uh, they tasted great. Uh, again, I, I want to make sure it's Littlefield. Uh, it's a venue called Littlefield, February 20th. Um, it should be a cool night. Like, I'll be hosting. And I'm, I know I'm doing a show also on, um, I'm playing with this band on Valentine's Day. And it should be great. And it's a brand new venue. But the um, Paper Anniversary, which is a great uh bluegrass band and i'm doing it with another comedian um jordan um jordan carlos jordan carlos and i and paper anniversary that's another show that i'm doing on valentine's day but that's just a really short set february 20th at littlefield I'm doing and I'm hosting, but I'm going to be doing a lot of material kind of off the cuff. Um, some of my, I'm, I'm going to think I'm going to bring a notebook full of weird shit. It should be a lot of fun. Um, I think that that's kind of like the best way to see me is when I'm loose and fun. <laughs> some gigs aren't loose and fun. They're like serious. Comedy's like crazy that way. Like, <clears throat> The ones that could pay your rent, the gigs that are for real, real. Uh, you got to have your P's and Q's together. Um, just a steady, when I was headlining, I still headline clubs, but you just got to be a little bit more in tune. And I'm just not there yet again, but these are the type of shows that will help that. Um I actually just slid onto Instagram and I was like, what the fuck am I doing here? I got the podcast, baby. Um, the cannabis coffee hour. Yeah, this is garlic cookies. I would recommend this. 
um one of my favorite more like chiller chiller like right now i'm pretty chill i haven't taken a nap but i could but i do have a few things today um but mostly it's all about getting this podcast done and i had to i had to i had a few guests lined up but it didn't play out but it does force me to you know do more of uh the solo and i i get more out of the solo and i think it's nice when I do a bunch of solos and then a guest, and then I don't end up talking over the guest as much because I get sick of talking. <laughs> uh, but I, today, like I didn't work out, but the other days I was trying to work out and I was, I just do my uh, Tibetan stretches. My, they're called the five Tibetan rites. If you want to go check them out. So my new move is five to, before I even smoke pot, um dead sober try to be i do the five tibetan rites which take about like 20 minutes and then i try to meditate for 40 minutes um and i wasn't making it i was chickening out like at 35 I, you can't say chickening but my mind was racing and then i had the podcast i just started it up and i definitely want to get this going like i definitely so like and subscribe to this podcast um because as New York legalizes, I mean, we're going to be all over the place. I love going upstate. Uh, Brooklyn loves herb. Queens loves herb. It's all getting legal, but it hasn't been. But it's starting to. And I think there's lessons to be learned from California and Colorado. I hope this new mayor is super smart about it. And the way to be super smart about like solving a problem is collecting all the data is getting all the information. You know, I've always said like with American legalization, they should definitely be just looking at Amsterdam. They should, I mean, they have years and years and years of data. Like look at all the countries and how they handle cannabis that it actually flows and works and it's a working part of society. Because in California, like it's the, the weed is getting taxed so bad by the federal government or by the California government that the legal market has to sell illegal weed to keep it like it's just too much red tape like they got to simplify it in order to make the market healthy again because the black market gains more power i guess that's how that works or i've been watching boba fett <laughs> it's all about like powers and wars and like ah but it's done so well and that last i'm going to watch it again i watched it i've already watched it one and a half times but I'm definitely want to watch it like two, three, four, five, fifteen times. Uh, music wise, you know, let's see. Music wise, what have I been listening to? That's what I wanted to show. Uh, a good way of doing that is, you know, I do just pop on YouTube a lot. And um, does everybody do that? Like I was thinking of dropping all. Like if I got rid of my Spotify, like I do pay for it, but I listen to a lot of stuff, just YouTube, you know? Whoa, I, I don't know if you picked that up, but those are my drums anyway. So I own the rights to that. That's from uh, my song, uh, uh, What I Got, my cover. But Grateful Dead, look at that. I got a Grateful Dead. Uh, video live grateful dead uh 331 1987 the, in philadelphia the spectrum i do love philly i mean it's it's tough the comedy there like there's just so many philly comedians and it's just not my style you know i didn't grow up there but the town and the vibe and the people are you know funny and cool um and it's definitely like if you like dive bars and like authentic cheesesteaks and shit like that like it's it's definitely authentic and has its own cool vibe and it's definitely funky and fresh but um billy strings yeah at the capitol theater that's what i checked out two four i've been listening to him uh smashing pumpkins i'll tell you one of my favorite songs is walking in staten <laughs> by snl uh yeah pete davidson that's a good song dude check it out uh the vines get free. Um, 
Wow. I do want to do like a DJ session once I get this beat machine, because then I know I own all the beats. The thing was, is like I try to do a IG live. I try to be DJ uh, D nice. Uh, who I may be able to get on the podcast. I know D nice, not dropping too many names, but he's a Brooklyn uh, dude. And we've run in a couple same circles and I've, I've reached out to him early in the podcast, but it was kind of before he super blew up on IG ever since he became like the biggest DJ on IG. I don't know, but I'll reach out to him. He's got a great vibe. Nice, nice. Be nice, dude. Um, what was I not talking about? Music. Always talking about music. Walking, walking in Staten. Uh, I have been enjoying some 311. <laughs> they got some good songs. And their tour videos are really interesting and cool. And um, I always like the Black Crows. I'll pump some Black Crows. I'll plump, pump some Clutch. Got a little Dolly Parton. Got a little bit. Uh, Led Zeppelin, um, some Cali vibe, reggae. You know, I got went into a big um, stick figure phase there for a while. I still listen to them. I just get get songs and I start playing the hell out of them. As you know, like uh, I talked all about Cheap Trick. I, I think Cheap Trick. Uh, I think I played that one so much. I don't. I don't know if I'll ever have to play it again. <laughs> Uh, because I loved it so much, but I still play it. Uh, I definitely want to play more guitar myself. In the beginning of this podcast, I would jump on and play really bad guitar, but I don't know. I shouldn't say that because then it could be kind of good. With music and comedy, it's all about like framing it and being confident, but also humble. There's something, there's that middle of the road where you're like, well, a lot of that is in the Buddhist meditations that I'm trying to is like you want to get to the point where you're like killing your ego, where you can work on the moment. But by being disciplined, you'll actually learn what you're trying to do at, at such a level that you can move it forward yourself without relying on your fake ass ego is kind of the gig. Um. Uh, I'm enjoying the, I'm almost done with this book, Think Like a Monk by Jay Sheedy, but it's pretty good. I recommend it, man. Uh, I get something out of it every time I read it. It's funky, it's fresh, it's new. Uh, and it's a book and it, and it will be my first one that I completed. I'm to the last chapter. It, but I mean, I've read every word and I got a highlighter and shit. Um, I definitely want to get a little bit more discipline on writing like I have like a couple open projects and I'm always tweaking it and I was getting into journaling for a while it's just trying to uh put that time in you know and then getting the rhythm going but I can do it I've done it with meditation you know by by and I did nail 40 minutes in a row a few times then I went back to 20 minutes and it was easy Not sure if I'm getting uh, enough of the video. I was squirming. I think I've drank a lot of coffee. So I'm squirming a little. And this herb is really good. So I got to slow down. I got some of this crazy uh, co coconut flavored dental floss. What do you guys know about that? I'm gonna try it out. Got a gift of that. I'm just going through my notebook. Um, like Dr. Bronner's. <laughs> like those bottles on Dr. Bronner's. Like I love Dr. Bronner's. So they got some good eucalyptus. He, Dr. Bronner, he messes with eucalyptus. He messes with the cannabis. And he, it's always got this long ass written thing on the side. So you know he's such a pothead that he just rambles. Because it's nice to talk. And when you're passionate, 
And when cannabis first opens up your mind, I remember when it does, and it still does, but I do think you can get there without cannabis. Um, it's just opening your mind and opening your heart. And it, that's in the moment. And then looking at, trying to look at life with that beginner brain and not relying on uh, all your like past or future endeavors. And just getting right down to the nitty grit. Uh, <clears throat> so the nitty grit is this, is that I need you guys to come out to the show. You don't have to. I don't need anything. <laughs> but I do think it's the tickets. I do know the tickets are selling. But uh, February 20th, great lineup. Rob Cantrell, Super Friends, Joe Para, Dina Hesham, Matt Koff, and myself. Very fun show. I got a beat machine coming, so look forward to that. We're going to get some more music. We're going to travel around. Check out the Patreon. You can watch all the videos of me smoking pot and drinking coffee and rambling um, just for you. I don't know anybody else doing this as consistent as I am. Some people are. Um, there's definitely a lot of people in the weed lane, but I'm creating my own weed lane. It's like me and this iced coffee. I've been, do I've been drawing a lot. It's been, I've been doodling a lot. I want to draw more. I went through a whole like adult coloring book phase, but now I want to get into back into like free drawing. And then I got this ultimate set of fucking uh, Sharpies. I literally got like 3,000 Sharpies. Uh, and I started drawing one the other day. I got a great open notebook. And it was such a fun drill. So I'm going to do a little bit of that. You know, I'll tell you more and more about my art more about my stand-up more about the music when i very first started it, the vision i saw was stand up with a little bit of music and that's where i'm at and a little bit of acting like stand up a like comedy was there stand up was there but i knew like like i would love to be on a show like larry sanders or um any sitcom you know is good kind of fun and also kind of gets your name out there so you can sell more comedy tickets. Because I love performing live. I love traveling. I love uh, traveling and smoking pot and drinking coffee and listening to music and going to record stores and sleeping in and hotel rooms and uh, walking around parks that I don't know. Uh, with a nice iced coffee and one hitter. I mean, what, 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 what's better than that? And with that, I'll have to say, I love Why don't you like and subscribe? Please do that right now. But thank you for listening.